Hi, and welcome to the 12th section of the Webflow course. Today, we're going to learn about symbols and how to reuse elements across multiple pages, which means that we're going to have to learn how to create a new page, for example, for the FAQ, where we have multiple symbols that are being reused. And then we're going to build a footer that includes multiple links. And these links, such as in the nav bar, can be linked to different pages of the site. So let's get started. This is what we have from the previous session. We have the body and a bunch of sections, but we don't have the footer yet. The first thing we're going to do is to create a new page. So we're going to go to pages. Right now we have the main page, which we can call home and save and some auto generated pages such as password and 404. These will be shown automatically when there's an error or when you need a password. So let's create a new page. Go to this icon on the top right, create a new page. We're going to name it FAQ and then create. It's simply going to be a blank page, just like the first time that we started in Webflow. But lucky for us, we can reuse some of the elements that we already created for the home page. So let's get back to home and then look at the nav bar. So I have this selected and here I can right click on the title of the element to create a new symbol. I'm going to name that nav bar and voila, we have a symbol and here we can copy this symbol go back to the FAQ page, select body and paste it. If we want to modify the symbol, we have to double click it. So like this, and we're going to change the links to, first of all, mockups, FAQ, and then sign in. As soon as you do that, you can see that across multiple pages, it's consistent. Now we're going to create a symbol for the FAQ as well. So we're going to right click from here and then create symbol. Name that FAQ. Then we're going to go back to the FAQ page. And here there's also another way to bring the symbol and it is in the add screen. So where it says elements and symbols, well, click on symbols and you can find all the symbols that you have created. So we just added the FAQ symbol and uh, let's also bring back the class for body. So we have a class called body, which holds the fonts from home. Now you might want to know how to link to different pages. So we have a menu right here in the nav bar and we would like the brand, which is a linkable element as expressed here with this icon. And if you go to the element settings, you can link to any page or any URL as well as any section. So in this case, since it is a page, we're going to link this to home. For those who are not familiar with what a page section is, it's basically an anchor that scrolls down to the section of the page that you want to. And uh, you can also use email, phone, as well as an attachment, which can be an image or any file. By the way, any block element can be converted to a link. Not these ones because this is part of a component, but if you go outside and let's say this one, you can right click on the title and convert that to a link block, which allows you to link to any of those pages or elements. So let me go back to the nav bar. I'm just going to link uh, the FAQ link to the page FAQ. So like this, I can start navigating from home to FAQ. Let me get out of preview. Typically a nav bar and a footer are the main symbols that you will find in any website. So let's create a footer. I'm going to select the body and press A to add a section. And that section I'm going to name right away in the style called footer. So here's the design I'm going to make. We have the footer, which is the section, including the background, which is just a color. And then we should have the container 
and if I enable the ruler you can see that I have some sort of a container which means that this container is going to divide into two sections the left portion and the right portion so it's going to use flex to do that and uh, this part is going to be a grid this part is going to be a normal div block and this one can be also another div block going back to webflow I'm going to select the footer and set a background let's scroll down at the bottom and set the background color to this code right here right now there's no space so we're gonna go back to spacing and set the padding top to 50 and the padding bottom to 50 as well next I'm going to create a container so scrolling down set the container name the class to footer container and then I'm going to add the links for my footer so press A again this time we're gonna create a grid and we don't have to customize this at all we can just select the grid and we can rename this to footer links and add our first link let's style the link setting it to 16 and we don't want the underline so we're gonna set the decoration to nothing let's open this and we can duplicate this link so that we have four links just like the nav bar so right click here and duplicate it three times we seem to be having a bit of an issue with the clipping here so what I can do for now is to set the height of the footer section to be let's say 500 so now I have plenty of space to see this and now I'm just gonna rename this to home and then mockups FAQ sign in these are the same links as the navbar and I can always reorder this the way I want thanks to the way that Webflow is working so that's really neat now let's add a new div block in the footer container this time it's going to be a div block and I'm going to rename this to footer copyright and I just need two texts the first one I'm going to add a text block I'm going to paste some text right here set it to 16 black and the font weight to medium then I'm going to add a new element this time is going to be a rich text why because I want to have links to privacy policy as well as terms and conditions inside a text if you want to delete the content you have to double click on that element select all and delete and now you can just copy and paste some text like this one and then if you want to have links then you can simply do that by using the link icon when you have the text selected in this case I can always link to slash terms and for the text for privacy policy I'm going to add another link to privacy slash privacy awesome so now I can just add a little bit of margin from the links so I'm gonna select footer copyright and add a margin of 20 in terms of the spacing between the elements there are so many ways to go about this for example I can go with the grid so setting this as a grid instead and not have multiple columns so I'm just going to delete the second column and now it's going to use the gap as the spacing so I can avoid having each element having its own class with its own margin which makes it not as reusable in terms of the link colors here remember that we set the all links class which applies to all the links in the website well it's essentially the same so I have to select the link element click here and I have to customize the all links style and if I do this let's say I don't want the underline it's going to apply to all of them at the same time so that's one thing to keep in mind I haven't found a way 
to have a combo class or to have a specific class to links inside a rich text. So I'm just going to put it to the same color as what we have in the design for now. And maybe what we can do is just to have an underline to make sure that people know that this is something that you can click. On top of that, I'm also going to make this rich text to have the same color. So using the same color code for color instead of dark gray. But by doing this, I actually affected the links, which is a link element. And that link element was inheriting the color from the all link style. Instead, I'm not going to use the inherited style. I'm going to have a custom link style for these link elements. And next, we're going to create the newsletter layout. So I'm going to click footer container. I'm going to create a new div block. For this div block, I'm going to add a new text block and I'm going to paste some text right here. Let's take a look again at the layout that we want to build. So we have this and this already done. We're building this now. We're not going to take care of the form yet. I'm going to show you that in the next section. But what I want to point out is that we have the icon to take care of here. And also we need to split this layout into two. So let's start by doing that. I'm going to select the footer container and then I'm going to use a flex. I need to group these two together. So I'm going to have to create a new div block called footer content. And using this div block, I'm going to put at the beginning and I'm going to drag and drop the footer links and the footer copyright inside. Now, if you have trouble putting that at the last line, I suggest put this in the first line first and reorder it after. For the other div block, we're going to rename this to newsletter. Then we're going to set the max width to 400. And so this is the footer container. And you can see that it's not distributing properly. So what we can do here is to justify either to center, but you're going to need to have some margin on one of the elements, or you can use space between, which has more space in the middle, and then space around, which has more consistent space across the board. So left, right, and middle. Now for the text here in the newsletter, we're going to add an icon and we're going to use the technique that is going to have a background image and then use padding to push the text. So let's add an image. It's called icon email. So this one and set the width to auto, the alignment to top left and don't tile. Now we just need to push the padding of the text from the left to 30. Finally, we can turn this whole footer into a symbol. So right click the title and create symbol for footer. And now we can go back to home and then add a footer by pressing A, going to symbols and add the footer. Voila. In the next session, we're going to style the rest of this footer and add a form for the newsletter and also for the login. The newsletter is going to be connected to MailChimp and for the login, we're going to cover basic stuff such as the fields, the placeholder, and then the success and error messages. So I really hope to see you in the next session.